Let's pray. Let's ask the presence of God to guide our meeting here today. Amen. Close your eyes, please. Our Lord and our Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I ask you to guide our meeting to use this opportunity to speak to your people to impact them, impact them with your word my lord in the name of the lord jesus i pray and i thank you if you agree say amen amen okay have a seat please salani panse what what is your greatest fear don't answer think about it first what is scaring you the most right now what are you scared of what are you afraid of some of you may be afraid or scared very worried about uh, an account a bill that you have to pay for example or what might happen to your child because your child is in trouble or your marriage or your health after after you went to the doctor the doctor told you some very bad news and you are scared of dying. Manje usabu ukuthi zofa. I would like you to think about right now what your greatest fear is. Ngathi ukuthi ucaba ngemanje ukuthi yeyiphi yona endi kuthusa kakhulu. When you worry, when you think about the future, ma ucaba ngathami ngekusasa. What are you afraid of? Yini le oyisabayo. The worst that might happen. Le nto embi mhlawumbe ngahle enzeke. So I would like the pastors, the assistants, to give you a piece of paper, or if you have a piece of paper right now, and you're going to write down your greatest fear, what you're worried about the most right now. Amen? Do we have paper to give to the people? Yes. If you have a piece of paper, or a notebook you can write it down mawenu nali pheshana nje noba i notebook ungazibhalela manje phansi i will wait for you to write it down in the meantime we're going to sing sakulindi ukuthi ubhale sakabe sicula manje my friend the day you have a choice life or death doing it. Okay. Just a couple more minutes. Go ahead. Write Palai. down what your greatest fear is right now, your greatest worry, greatest worry your greatest concern. If you have your Bible, you can also open it now if you are ready, if your paper is ready. Open your Bible in Matthew chapter 10. Matthew chapter 10.
Nikiambia sisi. Nangu mtu la. Amen. Okay. I have no idea what you wrote down. I don't know what you wrote down. But probably some of you wrote down or most of you wrote down your problem. Is that correct? Yes or no? If you wrote down a problem a situation that you are afraid of some bad news that you are afraid of receiving very soon if you wrote that down now you're going to find out why you are afraid of that amen you have your bible in so chapter 10 in verse 28 Matthew chapter 10 verse 28 Jesus says And do not what Do not fear those who kill the body but cannot what cannot kill the soul but rather fear him who what who is able to destroy both soul and body in hell saba ke loyo okwazi ukuthi achabalalise umzimba kanye nomphefumulo esihokweni Do you know why you wrote down a problem we had paper we had got kungani pale ingxaki lapho kulelo phepha when i told you write down your greatest fear you thought of a problem and you wrote it down do you know why uma ngithi bhala phansi leyo into kothusayo cabange nenginga why bhala phansi it's because you do not fear god kungoba usabu unkulunkulu You do not fear God. Ausabi unkulunkulu. Because if you feared God, koba ba umesaba unkulunkulu, then you would not fear any of these things that you wrote down on the paper. Ubungeke ke uwesabe noma yiphina lezinto obhale ngaphansi manje. Do you understand? Jesus said we must not fear anybody anything even someone who can kill our body uthu jesus singasabi lutho singasabi umuntu ngisho nalo yongabulala imzimba yethu someone can kill you someone puts a gun to your head outside and says give me your money or i'm going to kill you right now lo muntu beke isibham la ekhanda athi niye izimali yakho noba ngizobulala manje you must not be afraid kumele ukuthi ungasabi you must not be afraid ungasabi why Kungani. Because if you fear God, you know in your heart that if God wants, He can deliver you from this gunman. And if He doesn't, and you die, the gunman can kill your body, but not you so you go to heaven so you're not afraid amen we we had a pastor and this pastor was kidnapped by some very violent drug people and they took his car and they drove the car with the pastor inside by shyly motu mfundise ngaphakathi and they went very far away bahamba enda wene kude 
in an empty area. And they kept saying to the pastor on the way, we are going to kill you. We are going to kill you. They had big guns. And when they arrived there, they told the pastor to leave the car. And said, we are going to kill you right now. And then the pastor said, look, you can't kill me. And they said, no, we can. Of course we can. We are going to show you right now that we can. We are going to blow your, your brains out. And he said, no, you can't. And they started getting very nervous, very anxious. And they asked the pastor, why are you saying we can't kill you? And he said, because I'm already dead. I'm dead for my Lord. You, if you shoot me, you're doing me a favor. But you should be worried if you kill me. You should be afraid of God. And the drug dealers, they were really shocked by his courage. And they decided to let him go. Why was that pastor so confident? Not afraid to die. Even bold enough to say that the, the drug dealer should be afraid. Why was he so bold? Huh? Was he superman? Why was he so bold? Where did he get that courage from? Huh? From God, but how? In what sense? From his fear of God. That's what Jesus is saying here. Jesus is saying in this verse that we do not have to fear anybody in this world. We don't have to fear anyone except God. That's all. We must have the fear of God. And if we have the fear of God, then we will not fear anybody else. I will not fear if I don't have a job. If I lose my job tomorrow, but I fear God, I will not be afraid about my bills. Because I know that my God will provide for me. Amen. If I lose my marriage, if my, my, for example, if a woman who fears God loses her husband, her husband dies, or her husband cheats on her, takes another woman, decides to leave her, she will not cry desperate like it's the end of her life. Why not? Because she fears God. And the fear of God that she has in her heart doesn't let her be afraid of anything. She's very bold. Amen. So if you fear God, the only thing that you fear is to do something wrong against Him. Your only fear is to sin against God. You are very much afraid of sinning against God, of disrespecting God. Amen. Do you understand? The reason why you are afraid of your problems 
The reason why you are worried about them so worried that the first thought in your mind was the problem that you wrote down. If you are afraid of them, it's because there is no fear of God in your heart. Does that make sense to you? Are you following my thoughts? Yes or no? Did anybody write down that your greatest fear is God before I spoke about this? You did? I don't know. Asas. But if your greatest fear is God, then that should be the only thing you wrote down on the paper. Because, go ahead. Because if you wrote down, I fear God, and then you also said, I fear that I can't pay my bills, I fear that. <laughs> is it true or not? Understand, friends. So, when you are afraid of sinning against God, then you show respect towards Him. You show respect. To be afraid of God or to have the fear of God is not that God is going to punish you. But it's because you respect him. You honor him like someone who is very, very dear, very important to you. How do you behave towards someone that you respect very much? How? Think of someone you, you really respect. How do you behave? I don't know if, if the person you respect the most is your father or mother or grandfather. I don't know. If Mandela were here right now and, and gave you 10 minutes to talk to him, I don't know how you would talk to him if you show him respect or if you say, hey Mandela, how you doing? How would you behave? I don't know. But think of someone you would respect very much. How would you approach that person? Hmm? Would you just do like this? Would you? How would you approach the person? Huh? With respect, right? You would stand, you you would stand in a certain way before him or, or her. Right? If you shake your hand, you, you would go like this. To show what? Respect. Is it true or not? You would not speak much. You would just speak the, the few words, the right words. You would be very grateful. If you could, if you had time to prepare before you met him, you would put on your best clothes. You would never arrive for this appointment even one minute late. Yes or no? That's, that's the way that you show respect towards, towards people. Amen. To respect someone means you, you revere, you consider that person very, very important. I think in, in Zulu, correct me if I'm wrong, but 
When you say Saubona in Zulu, yes, sir. You, what it means is, I see you. Yes, sir. Right? Yes. If you see somebody in the morning, and you don't say Saubona, Ungambuli to the Saubona. Saubona, Baba. Saubona, Mama. Saubona, Sis. Good morning, Mama. Good morning, Baba. Good morning, Sis. If you if you see the person for the first time that day, Maumonu Kalumbona. But you don't say Saubona. Unga Bingele Lut Saubona. What does that mean? Londi Shukin. Huh? No respect. Aulan Tonipo. It's like this person doesn't exist. Ingat Lomuntu Akea Konje. For you. Akea Konje. Is it true or not? So Saubona means I respect you. In other words, I see you. You see, when when husband and wife or or members of the family they are they are fighting, they are not at peace with each other. They live in the same house. Or maybe in different houses. But they are family. But they are mad. They are angry at each other. When they see each other, they just they don't look. Is it true or not? Why is that? No respect. They do it on purpose. They don't talk. They don't say Saubona. They don't say how are you. They just ignore the person. To show I don't respect you. You don't mean anything to me. I'm mad at you. And they do that as a way to punish that person. To make that person feel bad. Yes or no? Because if you enter a person's house and that person ignores you, how do you feel? Huh? How do you feel? You feel bad. You don't feel welcome in that house. And that is the lack of respect. The lack of respect is the lack of fear also towards God. When you don't fear God, that means you don't respect Him. God is there, but you behave like He's not. Do you understand? Really? Let me repeat for you. When you don't fear God, when you don't respect God, it's like you ignore that He's there. You ignore that He exists. So it doesn't matter what God thinks of you. It doesn't matter what, what He thinks of, of what you're doing. You don't respect Him. Do you understand? For example, the assistant in the church, if the pastor, the bishop is passing by, the assistant immediately assumes respectful position and acts respectfully towards the pastor, the bishop. Starts getting very busy and and cleaning the church and putting but, things in place. Because the pastor walks in. But then the pastor walks out. And the assistant. And relax. Because the pastor is, is gone. This assistant is showing what? No respect towards God. He fears men. She, she fears the man. But she doesn't fear God. 
Because if she feared God, if she really believed that God is there watching her, then she would be working and doing everything regardless of the past or the bishop. Yes or no? If you fear God, then when you are, when you are in your house, in your job, and you are committing some sin, you're doing something wrong in God's eyes. If you really feared God, if you believe that God is there watching you, then you would not be doing it. Because you respect Him. You are afraid of Him. You fear Him. You say, no, I, I cannot lie. I cannot tell a lie because God knows it's a lie. This person I'm telling the lie to doesn't know. He thinks I'm telling the truth. But God knows that I'm lying. So I can't lie. Because this person fears God. Do you understand? When the person fears God, he behaves everywhere, every time, in whatever he's doing, as if God is there next to him. Are you understanding me? So if you did something wrong that you know was wrong, you did it today or yesterday, last week. But you, are, you come here today and you say that you, pray, you believe in Jesus, you believe in God. This is all a joke. You are being a fool. You are fooling yourself. Because God knows that you don't fear him. You come here to the church and you worship God, you pray, you feel happy, you sing, but when you go out, you do what is wrong. So where is the fear towards God? When you fear God, when you really have respect for Him, you honor him. You do, you do what is right in his eyes. You please him. Because you are afraid of not pleasing him. Because he's the only one who can throw your body and your soul in hell. So you are afraid of God. Amen. Is that clear? This is what we mean here in this study. You get you got the paper? Let's just read this quickly. It says the fear in tithing. So it says it is very difficult for people without spiritual insight to understand the meaning of giving tithes and offerings. Does the Lord consider it theft when a person is unfaithful in tithes? Yes, because tithe is what? The exclusive property of God. So when, when you take the tithe, if this is my tithe, God says that the tithe belongs to whom? To God. To him. But I take this and I use it for myself. I use what belongs to God. Am I having fear of God? I'm a thief. God says that I'm a thief. If you stole, if you took the money of your boss, if they're in your, in your job, 
you, you saw some money from the boss. La pemsebezi nuboni mali mpato wako. And you took the money. Waitata leo mali. Thinking, no, I'm just gonna use this for myself, and then I'll put it back. Utinza sebenzi sale mali mpinde ngibu yise. And your boss saw you. Au ubone ukumpata kakubone. What would happen to you? Guzo kwenze kani kuwe. Huh? At the very least, you would be fired. And depending on the money, how much money, you could even be arrested. Yes or no? When you do this towards God's money, how can you be free? Because if you go to jail for stealing from your boss, You can get a lawyer and the lawyer can fight for you and get you out of jail. Right? But if you steal from God, who is there who will get you out? Huh? So in, when a person touches the money that belongs to God, He is showing that doesn't fear God. He has no respect for God. After eating the fruit from the tree of life, Adam and Eve were immediately expelled from God's presence. They had access to all the trees in paradise and the right to eat from any except what one babe ngaza noba esisasa lapho kodwa ngaphandle kwalesi sisodwa even so they chose to disobey god's word nangona kunjalo bakhethe ukuthi bangalithobeli izulu kangulunkulu why was it forbidden to touch the tree of life kungani kwangavumeleka ukuthi bathinde lesi sasa sempilo na because it was what the first fruit of god it represented the so why did god put the tree there in the middle of the garden that tree represented him and he said to adam and eve you can eat of all the trees all the everything you see is yours But don't touch that tree. That tree is mine. The day you touch it, you shall die. That tree represented the authority of God, the respect that they should show for whom? For whom? God. Are you following? Everyone has has something in their house or some some object, some property that they don't want to share with anybody. Yes or no? Do you share your underwear with other family members? I hope not. Right? It's your underwear. My wife doesn't wear my, my underwear. Amen? And I certainly don't wear her. We are husband and wife. Bangu mie ni kunye nongoskaz. But some things that are mine are mine. And some things that are hers are hers. I respect that. So it's the same with God. God put all the trees there for Adam, Adam and Eve. But one tree, he said, don't touch it. And that's the tithe. When you are faithful in your ties, you are showing that you fear God. That you respect God. Amen. Because if your family member 
goes there in your bedroom. Umilunga lo mdeni e kamera nla ko. And opens the drawer. Abese vuli drawa ko. And takes your clothes. Atati mbasa zako. Without telling you. Enga kela ngaku. And wears your clothes. I ko ke. And then you arrive home and you see the person wearing your clothes. Mo fike kabo lo mutu fagi mbasa zako. You you get upset. We are to tell. Because you say, hey, that's my clothes. Uti timbata zamlezi. Did you go into my room? Ungene kamera lami. Did you open my drawer? Ufule drawer lami. You took my clothes. Wata timbata zami. And you did not ask me. Futu ngangela ngangshungela. You feel offended. Uzizwa u supegile. It may be an old piece of clothes. Ungaba tambi imba ingu benda ala ukoga. But it's not about the clothes. Kota kisi ingu bunge. The clothes is just cloth. Ingu bunge na indo ang. Just fabric. Indo ang bunge. But it's about the disrespect that you felt. Kota uzizu ngashonte ranga. When that person touched something that was so personal, so so private to you. Uma lumunte tinta indo e yako e yako weetwa. Is it true or not? That's the tie. Ogo shumi ge loko. When you touch the tie, mau tinto ogo shumi. That God has has declared belongs to Him. Ungu lugu la shilu ati ogo ake. It's like you are disrespecting. Ufanu guti au msoni pia mtelela. And bad things happen to you. Isn't it worse in big is like we're saying. Amen, friends. So I want to finish. Funu ketag. By asking you to remember this. Kelo guti nkumble lo. This paper that you wrote down. Leli paper pale pan. Your problem. Le inkinga. I'm not going to ask you to give it back to us. Ani zukte lo guti snigeze. For prayer. What is the standard? No. Ta. But I'm telling you that if you leave here today with a greater fear in your heart for God then you have for those problems then you won't have to fear these problems again. These problems will be resolved for you. Is that clear? Okay, stand up please where you are. And let's make our prayer. I want to call you here up front. If you recognize, if you recognize that you have not been fearful of God. So you can come to the front if you want to start having the fear of God in your heart. Everything. Not just in one thing, in one way or another, but in everything you will honor God, you will respect him. You may come here and tell God your decision. You tell him about your decision. That from now on you will live your life always thinking of God. You will always say to God Saubona. I see you. And therefore I respect you. In Jesus name. Make a prayer to God right now. Commit your heart to fear God right now.